Welcome once again to Shorty on the Fly. As fly tires, we sometimes get comfortable using the same patterns over and over again because we are confident with them and because they catch fish. But I get bored quickly, so I am constantly challenging myself to explore different patterns and materials in order to stay interested. I recently completed a box containing over 800 flies using no hackle at all. I wanted to see if I could fill a box with an effective arsenal of flies using no hackles as an exercise in my own creativity and research skills, and surprisingly enough, I was able to do so. I then realized that, having completed this project, what I learned might be useful for others who may be on a limited budget or who might just be getting started and who are not armed with a plethora of materials. I hope that what I have to offer in this video is useful to you. Filling the nymph slots in a no hackle box is pretty easy. A similar effect that you might get by using hackle to imitate legs or gills on a nymph can be easily achieved by picking out coarse dubbing with your bodkin or roughing it up with a velcro brush. Tails on nymphs can be imitated using a variety of furs rather than the feathers to similar effect. For tailing material on a dry fly, we usually use fibers from a hackle stem. But for our purposes of being more frugal, materials that have proven themselves as good tailing material are items such as moose body hair, bucktail, calf tail or kip tail, micro fibbits, and snowshoe hair. More about this amazing material in a minute. Just about any material that can be tied in to stabilize the aft end of the fly and provide flotation will work. You just need to consider what material will work best for the size fly with which you are dealing. Chances are, if you are a beginner, those pesky size 20 and 22 dry flies are not coming out of your vise just yet. So the aforementioned materials should serve you just fine. As an aside, as long as we are trying to save some money here, I'm going to suggest that you can produce just about any pattern you need using only two sets of dubbing. While there are many sexier dubbing blends that can achieve any number of desired effects, if you are just getting started, you can accomplish just about anything you need to by utilizing one box of coarse dubbing, such as rabbit or squirrel for your nymph bodies, and one box of dubbing such as Superfine for your dry fly bodies. Eventually, you will probably experiment with many other effective and enticing body materials, but for now, the dubbing will suffice. Besides, if you are a beginner, you will want to get some experience getting a dubbed body correct. Beginners have a tendency to use way too much dubbing at first. And that brings us to the material that will float your fly. On traditional fly patterns, rooster hackle is used. This material is now available in a tremendous number of colors and permutations, and learning to work with it is one of the joys of fly time. The first time that you wind that hackle around the hook and see the beautiful effect can be a true aha moment in your early fly tying career. But there are drawbacks. These days, the hackle coming out of some of the major hackle producers is just amazing compared to what it was back in the day but it is also amazingly expensive. If you need to have a less expensive but very versatile material that will produce a wing that will float your fly, I would like to suggest using either deer hair or snowshoe rabbit's feet. While we usually think of deer or elk hair as producing the characteristic look of a caddis pattern, it can also be used to represent that swept back look of a mayfly wing especially when combined with the other characteristic traits of a mayfly pattern, such as including a tail and an appropriate body color. And if you tie it onto a curved hook, such as a clink hammer style or a Daiichi 1130, and create a mayfly imitation, deer hair is tough to beat. I find that fine comparadon hair works best for me, but any deer hair that you may have will serve the purpose in this case. As with many materials such as this, it is available in a variety of colors that will serve your needs well. As you will notice, each of these flies involves basically the same tying procedure. By varying the size of the hook and the color of the other materials, we are able to imitate just about any mayfly you can think of, and a few that you may not. But one of my favorite materials to use as a substitute for hackle as a floating material is snowshoe rabbit's foot. It is inexpensive, relatively easy to work with, comes in a variety of colors, and is extremely versatile. 
This material was used to create Fran Better's iconic pattern called The Usual, in which it provided material for both the wing and tail. In this case, the wing is tied in as just a clump. It doesn't get much easier than that. It can also be tied in as a swept back Trude style wing. And yes, you probably see some CDC offerings in there, but remember, part of this discussion was trying to find a way to save some money and CDC, while a beautiful material with which to work, can be a bit pricey. More on that material in a future video. And for those of you who would like to argue that being a feather CDC counts as hackle, my friends and I decided that when tied in as a wing, it is not, but if wrapped, then it becomes a hackle. So there, Mr. Smarty Smart. Although it is easy to become overwhelmed with the number of choices of material available for tying your flies, especially dry flies, if you keep it simple and concentrate on what you're trying to accomplish, it does not really have to be that complicated. Your creation really only needs to accomplish two things. Approximate the appearance of the fly and float properly. So whether you're tying on a budget or just looking for a different way to do things, there are plenty of options to choose from when getting ready for your next outing. If you found this video helpful, feel free to leave a like and a comment. We love hearing from you. If you feel so inclined, share it with a friend or two or six. Thank you for watching. Tight lines. I bid you peace.